Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives about what's going on at their companies. With us today, happy to have him back, Harry Barr, Chairman, CEO of New Age Metals, trades on the Venture Exchange under NAM for our friends in the US, NMTLF, and for our friends in Europe on Frankfurt under P7J. For those of you new to the story, that's going to be a lot of you or some of you or some of you. The company's got two great divisions. That's, that's what we love about this company. The first one is their PGM division that Harry's going to talk about. They've got 100% ownership there of the River Valley Project, which is one of the largest undeveloped, undeveloped platinum group metals projects. That were P, that's where PGM comes from. Uh, 2.9 million ounces of palladium equivalent in measured and indicated Palladium is the main payable metal, and that's good news because the spot price of an ounce of palladium is now up to $2,300 as of today, and that's up, I don't know, about 20 25% over the last 12 months. Uh, and it hosts other battery metals, including copper, nickel, and cobalt. Right now, they're advancing the pre-feasibility study uh, after a great PEA and more third-party validation. Eric Sprott became a strategic shareholder. Let's talk about the company. Harry, welcome back. Thanks for having us, George. Happy New Year to you, the New Age Metals team, and obviously all shareholders. Yeah, same to you and yours. All right, so we've got, you know, it's 2021, uh, and you want to talk about what's going to be happening to the company going forward. Uh, the market over the last month and a half seems like they're finally starting to really figure out New Age Metals. You've had great appreciation, you know, from the $0.06 cent to the $0.13 cent range. What differentiate New Age Metals? What are they figuring out now? Well, I, I think there's a couple things, George. In terms of green metals, we've got the two divisions, as you said, uh, having one of the largest undeveloped primary palladium projects in North America. We're taking it from the PEA stage, which uh, there's been about 40 million collectively spent on the project. Uh, we did our first economic study in 2019, and we're moving towards pre-feasibility study. Uh, so I think the word's getting out on it. As you said, the price of palladium uh, has been exceptional. Uh, platinum's moved up. It's over a thousand ounce again. And a lot of the analysts are saying it could be 2000 in the next year or two. And we have rhodium. We're just doing rhodium studies now. We didn't do enough assaying on the rhodium, but rhodium has been as high as 20,000 an ounce. And we should have our first announcement in the next few days on the first wow. run of 300 samples of rhodium. So, um, and that's discounting our lithium division 100%, seven projects in Manitoba that we can talk about. Sticking with, sticking with River Valley and Platinum Palladium, what's driving the price of Palladium and Platinum? And, and when people hear those metals, they don't necessarily think green metal. They don't, they don't think green energy. They don't think green. So what's driving them and, and why are they green metals at the end of the day? Well, Palladium has been in deficit since 2012. And it's, it's a green metal because about 85% of the Palladium is used in your auto catalyst. So the auto catalyst in your car does basically the last afterburn and tries to protect the environment as the gases go out of your car into the atmosphere. Um, platinum, about 40% of its use is, is in the same. And rhodium, just about all of it is used um, for the same for your uh, catalyst and, and the auto catalyst. So uh, that's most of the uses. Uh, every couple of years, countries around the world add more uh, environmental uh, sensitivity. So more and more platinum and palladium are being loaded into your auto catalyst. And I think that's the, the biggest group. Your River Valley, the River Valley project, we describe it as one of the largest undeveloped platinum group metals projects uh, in the country for sure. I don't, I don't know where it ranks in the world. And that's why I'd like you to give everyone at home a little context. Just how big is River Valley? Your PEA has a life of mine of 14 years. Um, so give us give us sense on the non-technical side, just how important of a strategic asset that is, especially as we move into this green battery metals uh, phase that, that is unstoppable now. Well, most of your platinum group metals come from either South Africa and Russia. So having a deposit of this kind in North America is quite unique. There's only a couple of them, really. Um, and as I said, uh, the supply has been limited. So the, the price... Uh, of the metals have gone up a lot. We're in an excellent place too, George. We're just 100 kilometers out of Sudbury. So in terms of infrastructure, you can't really beat where we have the, the project for junior mining 
company, everything we need in the mining industries in, in the Sudbury district. I've driven there. I've driven right off, right at the highway, onto a secondary, a couple of highways, and then right onto the property. It's amazing. It's not in the middle of nowhere. It's right here. Yeah. So all of that makes a, a big difference uh, in terms of where we're situated. And, um, you know, we're just moving towards uh, the pre-feasibility study now. We're, we've got four quotes out with engineering companies. Actually, we just got one in and we should have the rest this week. And they're quoting us on their individual price. There'll be four different engineering companies working on the pre-feasibility study. So within the next month, we should have an announcement of what it would take to complete that study. And we hope to start at about the uh, second end of the second quarter this year. A lot of people at home don't know. I mean, they understand the pre-feasibility studies are important. They don't know what role they pay ex exactly. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, I'm not talking about absolute perfection, but within you know within a range according to plan. When what do you see as the future for River Valley in terms of when you can start, you know, commercializing it? Well, we hope to have the pre-feasibility study done by the end of the first quarter of next year. And then on to the, pre, the feasibility study itself, that could take about a year. So, you know, we could be planning towards uh, building a mine sometime about two and a half, three years from now uh, would be the start of it and maybe take up to a year, year and a half to do. So certainly within the next three to five years, uh, we'd be looking at uh, production of all those perfect down projects. Is your plan to for new age metals to be the one that takes it straight through to production or or, or would the plan be like a lot of great companies in your position have done in the past? You get it set up, you know, you get it set on the table for an acquisition by a bigger, by a bigger uh, mining company. Each one of these studies we're working on now is de-risking it and hopefully adding a lot more value. I mean, if you look at, at $2,000 US um, platinum group metal equivalent, every million ounces is a, is a, is a billion dollars plus, uh, you know, on, on the property. So um, it's, um, it's, it's, there's a lot of metal in the ground, a lot of, a lot of value. And fair to say time's on your side, Harry, because you know, uh, it is true that palladium keeps moving up, platinum keeps moving up. So as time goes by, all the things being equal, River Valley just becomes more and more, should become more and more valuable just on what you just said there. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the analysts are looking at you know, many years out in platinum group metals, and there seems to be a, a demand and, and hopefully they think the price will stay up over the next few years. So uh, it's looking good. In the past, it's been kind of tough to get shareholders to really get excited about River Valley because PGMs aren't that well known. You know, it's not gold per se, right? As a precious metal, it's not uh nickel or cobalt, right? Where people can put it firmly into battery metal. So it's been difficult for people to kind of get excited about new ages. They just didn't understand that. But the one person that did get excited was Eric Sprott. What does it mean for the most renowned uh, you know, resources investor in my lifetime anyways, in this country to be such a significant uh, shareholder of the company because that to me is immense third-party validation. This just isn't Harry, the CEO, hoping and wishing. You're talking about Eric Sprott. What does it mean to have him, and what does it say about River Valley? Well, I think he's a leader in the investment field. And interestingly enough, a couple of years ago, we've talked to him a couple times, and he wasn't investing in Platinum Group Metals. And it was just about a a year ago in December that he came in and invested in the first company. We were probably the second or third. There's only a handful of companies uh, like us in North America and some have assets that are actually in Finland and Brazil. And so he pretty much invested in the top five or six companies here around the, from December 2019 to uh, about February, March of 220. And obviously we were one of them. So I, you know, I said a couple of years ago, people couldn't spell palladium or understand what it even was. Right. And, you know, as a leader kind of in the investment field, he's usually the first guy in. And I think he's, he's seeing a trend of, you know, price increases and price stability and demand and not enough supply. And I think that's, you know, I don't know what he would say, why he did it, but I think it, some of those reasons have to be why. Yeah, at some point we'll hopefully have him on to discuss that. But for everybody at home, the great thing about having someone like Eric Sprott, this isn't George Cho, this is Eric Sprott who made this investment. You're, you still have to do your own due diligence, of course, but the implication there, right? It's implied that 
uh, you know, new age has passed Eric's, Eric Sprott's due diligence. So that's a pretty great third party validation. Let's talk about the lithium side, Harry, because that's what makes new age metal, this, this green metals company. And now for people watching at home, they understand why palladium, the role that plays lithium is more well, is, is much more understood of much more well understood. Uh, your primary project is the, is the lithium one project in Southeast Manitoba. And you've, you're the largest mineral claim holder in the whole area, but let's talk about li the Lithium One project and, and where it's at. Well, we, we own 100%, the shareholders of New Age Metals own 100% of Lithium Canada development. And in that uh, private company, our wholly owned sub, we have seven projects of which Lithium One is one of them. Lithium One and, and Lithium Two are two projects that we are ready to drill. Lithium-2 has just recently got its drill permit before Christmas, and Lithium-1, we're in the final stages of getting its drill permit. Both these properties have between 2 and almost 4% of lithium uh, on surface in terms of surface sampling we've done. Uh, one of them has an old 943-101 uh, resource that was done in the 40s and 50s. Um, it's non-compliant now, but we know there's, there's mineralization there. That's Lithium-2. And so both of these projects uh, are ready to be drilled. We did a second round of work on Lithium One and just put an announcement out a couple of weeks ago. The government of Manitoba gave us a grant towards that. We're gonna make a second application here coming up. And I'm, ass I'm assuming that Manitoba- Just flying, flown by. I'm assuming that drill. government of Manitoba is, is really incentivized to help you guys out because they wanna see, uh, they, they wanna get the benefit of, of a robust Lithium uh, economy in Manitoba. Yeah, they've, they've given money to, I think, at least three companies that are in the lithium business that we've seen here so far. They put together a $20 million fund. So we're anxious to get our second application in, which we hope will be in in the next couple of weeks. And we want to fly um, a lithium two with this drone. That's a new type of uh, drone flow in geophysics. And then we want to do uh, another property that's down by the Tanko mine that we surround the uh, the Tanko mine, and we've got consultants that work there for years as our head consultants out there. So we've got, you know, the right people helping us do it. We've got one of the largest land positions of its kind in, in that area, a uh, good province to do work in, and uh, we're excited to, to move those projects forward too. Harry, given what's going on in the green environment and can't be stopped, right? The green economy that's coming, we now have uh, new, a new president of the United States who, who sent a very strong signal by joining the Paris, the Paris Treaty uh, Accord, uh, canceled the Keystone Pipeline. So they are sending the signal to the world that green is the, where the U.S. goes and where the U.S. goes, everybody follows. So the trend, at least for the next four years, and I don't see it stopping, is towards that. Do you ever get tempted? And this is just a loose conversation. I'm not asking for any, you know, material, undisclosed information, but do you ever get tempted to start to think that maybe uh, you might want to spin out the lithium because it's so significant, the lithium assets into a separate project and River Valley, uh, you know, stay within new age metals? Do you, ever, do, you ever, do you ever think that or or are you stronger having them all under one roof? No, I mean, we have three stated objectives right now for the lithium, Georgia. Uh, an option joint venture would be perfect. Uh, and then it could stay within the company at least till we de-risk it more. Uh, we are looking at taking uh, Lithium Canada development public as an IPO as a possibility. And uh, the other is to get a shell with a, you know, a few shares out and, and then Lithium Canada development into it. So those are the three areas we're looking at. Uh, lithium prices have gone up dramatically in the last, uh, just in the last month or two. Sure. And many of the companies uh, in Lithium themselves have gone up dramatically in terms of the share price, just again in the last couple of months. Lithium's last kind of run was in 2015 and 16. So there was a couple of years, even though everybody could see that down the road and just in the next year or two, there wouldn't be enough supply to keep the car manufacturers going forward. As you know, almost every big car manufacturer in the world has a stated objective now to make electric cars. And, and so the uses and the need for lithium going forward is going to be tremendous. Just in the next year or two, they figure it will be under supply. So it's a good time to have those kind of projects. We've been moving them ahead as best we can with our main focus on the River Valley, but uh, you know, trying to de-risk them as much as we can. And we're hoping to have at least three of them of the seven projects ready to be drilled here in the next uh, couple, three months. 
Harry, sounds like everything's going great at New Age Metals. And you, uh, what, I, what I really respect about what you've done at New Age Metals leading the company is you haven't jumped and hopped into the latest, greatest, hottest thing. Uh, you've stayed the course. You stayed the course when, you know, lithium kind of fell off the cliff and people weren't interested anymore, but you knew where things were going. You're a real estate guy at heart. And, uh, and you knew that holding on to these project was going to, was going to create uh, shareholder value in the future. And you're just at the beginning of that. But uh, I, I, you know, I congratulate you on staying the course when so many other people are hopping back and forth into, into, into different things. Last words to you, what should shareholders uh, in addition to what you've talked about, because obviously there are things going on now with, you know, the, the, you're going to make announcements on pre-feasibility study and what the plan's going to be. And, uh, you know, what are, what are the big milestones that, that shareholders and new people should be looking for out of New Age Metals? Well, I think on the River Valley Project, George, I just don't want uh, shareholders or potential shareholders to forget that not only are we a platinum group metal uh, project primarily driven by uh, palladium first and, and platinum second, but we do have a lot of cobalt, a lot of copper, a lot of nickel that are going to be payable metals there. We're also started and should have a, something out in the next few days, a look at rhodium. We had rhodium, we knew it on the property. Again, it traded up to $20,000 an ounce in the last couple of weeks. Um, and we have just done the first study of 300 assays. Uh, and we hope to move those studies where we'll do three or 400 to three or four areas of the projects uh, over the next few months. So there'll be an ongoing rhodium study with announcements coming out there uh, over time. In the next couple of weeks, we will have the, the cost of the pre-feasibility and we should be announcing that within the next month or so and hoping to get started at that at the end of the second quarter and finishing it by the end of uh, the uh, first quarter of next year. So that's, that's what's happening on the, uh, and, and there's a lot I didn't mention, but we have about nine targets that are ready to be drilled on the project too. I'm not gonna make promises right now when we start drilling, but they're ready to be drilled there. Uh, the lithium division, as we said, we've got two projects that are drill ready and we're trying to get a third one going there. We're going to basically move it ahead as best we can with an application for a second grant that we think we'll get. We can't promise that right now, but uh, we did a good job in turning everything in uh, the way the government wanted on the first one. And we've been trading a lot more volume recently, which is slowly moving our price up. Uh, as you say, we were six cent stock not long ago. We hit as high as 16 cents last week, currently trading in the 12 and a half, 13 uh, cent range, but trading a lot of volume. So what I tell people, if you're, uh, if you believe that we're starting a super cycle for metals again, it seems like every metal and every company that's involved is moving up recently. And you're going to look at maybe a basket of uh, five to 10 companies. That there's no reason why new age metals wouldn't be one. Yep. Yep. That's sound. That sound, uh, that's a sound suggestion. And for everyone at home, you, you got to do your due diligence on that. But, you know, Harry clearly is advocating and advocating for his company on solid grounds. Um, last statement I'll make, Harry, see, fair to say that New Age 2021 is a bit of a transformative year for the company that after years of being patient and advancing the projects and doing all, you know, the blocking and tackling, like we like to say, you know, all the tough work, this, this is the beginning of a, of a new phase as as uh, the the green and the green economy starts to move forward, and both the both River Valley and the lithium side seem to be over the hump and now moving uh, in a in a more upwardly trajectory. Yes, I agree. I think uh, as I said, it's the start of a super cycle. It looks like uh, there's a lot of money started about mid last year coming back into the golds and silvers, and now you're seeing cobalt companies and you're seeing. Uh, lithium companies and certainly uranium companies being financed and platinum group metal companies. So I think it's a certainly a good time to be in the industry. And I think we've got a few good years ahead of us for sure. Thanks for joining us, Harry. And it sounds like we're going to have you back a lot in February, March, because there's so much that's coming that's that's happening news wise in next in the next several weeks. So looking forward to that. And, and thanks for joining us today. Tell everybody about uh, uh, where the company's going. Thanks a lot for having us, George. For everyone at home, it's time to do your due diligence. You've watched or you've, or you've heard by podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, or your favorite platforms to Harry Barr. He's chairman and CEO of New Age Metals, TSX Venture Exchange, NAM uh, in the US, NMTLF. And for our friends in Europe on Frankfurt under P7J, 
to start your due diligence, get to Agoracomp, take a look at the profile section for New Age Metals. This is a big company. There's a lot of moving parts in here, a lot of great moving parts. So we've got it neatly laid out for you to be able to understand, absorb, and comprehend it. And then from there, make sure you link over to the New Age Metals website, obviously, to do your final due diligence. A lot of great information there. Hopefully you discovered your next great small cap company, especially in the green space. Don't say we didn't tell you so. Thanks. Have a great day. See you next time.